Have you ever find yourself drowning in a sea of textbooks the night before a crucial exam, desperately trying to absorb a semester's worth of knowledge? Well, me too. <laughs> You're in your room, you have hundreds and hundreds of pages left to read, but for some reason everything just seems a lot more interesting than to sit down and actually start studying. Hmm, should I just start cleaning the kitchen now? That seems like a wonderful idea! So up until I get to university, I always considered myself as a lazy student. I never really put in a lot of work, I was always looking for shortcuts, I really only studied when I had to, but for some reason I still managed to be a straight student all throughout high school, all throughout elementary school, and even at university I was acing my university. And my experience made me realize that the key to becoming a straight A student wasn't to study very hard, it wasn't to pull all-nighters, it wasn't to study for 15 hours straight. I realized that the secret to becoming a top student was to change up a few but very crucial and very fundamental study and lifestyle habits that I'm gonna share with you in this video. So keep watching. Okay, so you want to become a straight A student. You want to become a high achiever straight A student. The first thing you have to do is to put this bad boy on airplay mode. I think most of us have undiagnosed ADHD and so I'm pretty convinced that one of the reasons why most of us find it so hard to concentrate and to focus and just to sit down and study is because of the constant notifications and messages. If you want to become a straight A student or even if you just want to improve your grades, the first thing that you have to do is to put this phone away. This goes for your phone but it also goes for anything else that could distract you from studying. Like for example, if you live with people who are very annoying, if you have annoying roommates who are just making a lot of noise or if you have annoying parents or family members, earplugs, earbuds, AirPods, you choose your weapon, but you need to eliminate all the distractions around you. And so one of the best ways to start is to put this away and then put this in. I also heard of people who, in order to eliminate distractions, put their phone in a separate room or in a drawer, for example. So whatever floats your boat, just make sure that the outside world and the outside noise don't have access to you. Your boyfriend can wait, your friends can wait, your mom can wait, people can wait, your future cannot wait, people can wait. It's just for a couple of hours. First things first, self-discipline. So now that we have all distractions eliminated, let's talk about where you should study. A lot of students make the mistake of studying in the same exact spot where they also do all of their other daily activities. This is usually their room, their desk, the dining table, or even their bed. I have to confess, I was one of these people. I would say between the ages of 12 to 23 probably, I was always studying in my bed. It was the worst. Like I was writing my homework in my bed, I was writing my assignments in my bed, I was revising in my bed, I was drawing in my bed, I was even eating my dinner in my bed. And let me tell you why this is the worst idea ever. So according to science, studying in the same room that you also use to relax or sleep can be actually super bad to all of these activities. According to psychology student Caspian Leah, when we enter certain places, our brain is automatically reminded to perform certain behaviors associated with those places. So for example, when you go to your car, what do you do? You fix your mirrors maybe? You fix your seat? And then you put on your seat belt. You don't even have to think about it. Like you just do it automatically because that's the behavior that you thought to your brain. The issue is when we have these multiple behaviors associated with one place and especially when these behaviors are very contradictory. Learning, revising, studying and working is very very different from relaxing, watching Netflix and sleeping. So when you have all of these behaviors associated with your bed or with your desk or with your dining table, your brain is gonna be confused. Your brain is like... So your brain is very confused. So science actually recommends us to either have one study spot where all we do is study or to regularly switch up our study spots. I personally recommend switching up your study spots regularly because this can actually enhance learning and retention. There is just something about recalling the same thing in different environments that helps you to remember it better. I also personally really like to go to places where a lot of 
people are doing the same thing. Libraries, coffee shops, or like we work places where a lot of people are working at the same time. I think that this is very productivity enhancing. Being in an environment where a lot of people are doing the same thing, and especially when it's something like studying or working, I really recommend you switching up your study spots regularly, and especially try to go to places where a lot of people are studying with you. So now that we talked about the best place to study, let's also talk about when you should study. So again, according to scientific experts, the best time to study is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m and 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. I actually don't agree with that because any other experienced student who know how to study even outside of those two time windows know that the best time to study is whenever you can feel the most alert and concentrated during the day. And let's debunk another myth. You don't have to wake up early to study, okay? Like, I kind of agree with the statement that you can focus better earlier in the day and that you're more fresh and that your cognitive functions are better. I do agree with that however I can also see how it's not something that's gonna work for everybody some people are just really night owls some people who have like mental disorders or who have insomnia or ADHD or who just have a really hard time waking up early and concentrating and those two time windows are just never gonna work and this is why I want to tell you to never compare yourself and to never compare how you study to how other people study just because waking up at 7 and studying for 15 hours works for someone it doesn't mean that it has to work for you. So if you're someone who has a hard time waking up early, but then you feel like super concentrated and alert at 2 a.m. and you want to do all of your studying at 2 a.m., honestly, do that. Like, just try to find what works best for you and try to stick to that. And it also goes for study methods that might work for a lot of people, but that might not work for you. Like, let's take the Pomodoro technique, for example. I have no idea who came up with it, but it's just something that's never going to work for me because if I take a break after every 20 minutes. Those breaks are not gonna be just five minute breaks. Those breaks are gonna turn into two hour K drama sessions. If I'm gonna take a break after 20 minutes, I just better stop studying for the day. So don't compare yourself to other people. Find what works best for you and study in the times where you feel the most focused and concentrated. Organize your day for success. I truly believe that at least 70% of your academic success depends on how well of a strategy you can create for yourself and how organized you are in your time management. So when it comes to studying and exams, you need to be organized. Start putting your study sessions in your calendar in advance. What do you do when you have an appointment? You put it in your Google agenda. Whenever you have a lunch with someone, you put it in your Google agenda. If you want to organize your study sessions, you need to put it in your agenda and you need to put it weeks in advance. Like that's the other thing. You have to know when your most important exams are coming up. I think a lot of students where they go wrong is that they don't really follow their like exam schedule. They don't really know when their next exam is going to be. So they just get so lost in their whole like preparation process because they don't really know when what is. So if you know, for example, that you have a very important exam coming up next week, make sure that you prepare this week that you have around that one exam. So for example, plan like one or two hour study sessions every single day just to prepare for that exam. I think what a lot of students go wrong these days is that they don't really know how much time they need to prepare for certain exams. They either think that they need less time than they actually do, or they think that they need more time than they actually do, and then they end up procrastinating or wasting time. Sit down and write down all of your upcoming exams, and then next to it, write down how much time you think you need in order to prepare for the exam. Another really good thing that you can do is to write down all of your upcoming exams and then put it on a post-it note and then put that post-it note on your fridge or on your mirror, just literally in front of your eyes so that you can see when your next like big exam is gonna be. And this is very useful because this gradual preparation process will help you to avoid finding yourself in a state of panic the day before the exam because you haven't even started revising yet. Visualize success. So I've been personally using visualization for the longest time now for many different things in my life. Like for example, when I wanted to get accepted to a certain university, I also use visualization to like get a certain money in my bank account. And I also use visualization to even find love. So visualization is a great 
great for many things, but it's also very great for achieving academic success. So if you don't know what visualization is, it's just basically a practice where you create mental images in your mind that implies that you already have or that you already achieved the thing you want to achieve. In my case, for example, when I was visualizing getting accepted to a certain university, I would create a scene in my mind that implies that I'm checking my emails and I'm receiving an email from the university that I wanted to get accepted to, congratulating me on my acceptance to that university. And when it comes to achieving academic success, I would close my eyes and I would imagine going to my university's website, going to see my grades, and I would see the grades that I wanted to have. Your mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what you're just imagining in your head. And so when you're repeatedly feeding an image to your mind, when you're repeatedly imagining something in your mind, it just gets imprinted on your subconscious mind. And if you know anything about your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind's job is to basically lead you to the behaviors and actions in order to achieve what you're repeatedly seeing in your mind. Like your subconscious mind will just lead you to the behaviors and actions that you need to take in order to have that achievement, in order to achieve what you're seeing in your mind. This is what famous celebrities like Oprah or Jim Carrey or all of these people did when they wanted to become successful. So, so didn't you write yourself a check? I heard yeah. that you did, is that true? I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered and I gave myself uh, five years or three years maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated at Thanksgiving 1995 and I put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and, uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. Maybe. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Yeah. So you visualize yourself like... Yeah, yeah. Train your mind to succeed. Visualize yourself already being a top student. Keep repeating what you want and you will get there. Like you will know, you will know what to do. Make sure you're healthy. All this being said, you can strategize all day. You can pull all nighters if you want, but if you're not healthy, if you're not taking good care of your health, all of these efforts are gonna go to waste. I think a lot of times, especially us young people, one of the reasons why we have such a hard time with concentrating and why we are so lazy, we're not lazy. We are just trying or anxious or burned out your health and especially your mental health have a really huge impact on how your brain functions how productive you are your cognitive functions your academic performance so if you're not taking care of your overall health if you don't get enough sleep if you're not eating well if you're not working out or at least if you don't do any kind of minimal physical activity like walking it's gonna be really hard to do well academically so the thing that i would put first before all of these strategies and analyze and hard work is to make sure that you're healthy, make sure that you sleep enough, make sure that you sleep at least, I would say from six to eight hours. Also make sure that you do things that you actually like to do. Like if you're in a very stressful study environment, if you have to study really a lot, make sure that you're also doing things that make you happy. Make sure that you see your friends, make sure that you go out, make sure that you go to the cinema. Studying is not everything. And I noticed that the more chilled I am, the more relaxed I am about studying and academics and and all of that stuff, the better grades I was getting. Don't burn yourself out with studying. I experienced a very serious burnout earlier this year because I was at university and I was also working a nine to five job at the same time, which is not that easy. It got a lot better, but if you guys are curious about how I kind of overcame that burnout and how I managed studying and working at the same time, you can check that video out here if you're interested. I truly believe that 80% of being a straight A student depends on just being super self-aware on how much time you need to prepare for exams, how much effort you need to put into exams, being mentally and physically healthy, and also being in a place where you are not distracted by outside circumstances so figure out what method works for you. Don't compare yourself to other people and you're gonna become successful. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this. And if you're curious about how I personally study consistently with a nine to five job, please make sure to watch this video next.